I mean, the short position has been going up for by the commercials, what, for two months now? And what has silver done? It's gone from 26 to 35. So what, so what are we supposed to say? Well, yeah, it means it's going to fall. Yeah, eventually it will fall. But the point is that, you know, J.P. Morgan, the COMEX, there is, there is no business there going on. It's simply a matter of naked shorting as much as they can. And eventually they'll lose. So I'm not worried about the COMEX at all. And we cannot like have another year with gold going up another $300 an ounce. We can't have another but would 16 you sell months commodity the stocks right now? Would you sell gold mining stocks? They're getting hit today pretty hard. Would you keep selling them, my friend, or would you go and buy them on weakness? All the gold that's ever been mined since the start of time is above ground and ready to be sold at the right price. So there's just no fundamental demand here. If interest rates start moving up, it makes it more expensive to carry gold, and the dollar's firming. The truth is, is gold is money. And that money should possess three characteristics. The first is that it should be a store of value. Gold and silver have filled this role perfectly because they were rare, took a lot of human energy to mine, and did not corrode or rust. By contrast, the U.S. dollar pretty much constantly loses value over time, a feature which punishes savers and enforces the need to speculate. A second feature is that money needs to be widely accepted within a population as an intermediary within and across all economic transactions. And the third feature is that money needs to be a unit of account. You know, when I tracked this credit bubble, it started in the mid-80s. Uh, it expanded uh, very aggressively through that whole period of time. If we just charted the credit bubble as having started in 1998, which is giving it a very late start, I think we have, we doubled uh, total credit market debt, so that's an extra $26 trillion that came in. If it's a normal bubble, if this was a credit bubble, we have to burst it. We have to find a way to undo probably $20 trillion worth of bad debt. There are long-lasting costs associated with unemployment rates at the level we're seeing and with the duration of unemployment we're seeing. And it really is the biggest challenge, the most difficult problem that we face right now. Cash is debt. We want to get away from it. We want to get into something with real value. So every time there's a pullback like this, you can be guaranteed that I'm getting more of this stuff. And I thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chairman. This hearing is adjourned.